G'day. A friend of mine was uh, showing us the way he holds a dial indicator for getting in close to the chuck and it's a problem that I've had and so I, I sort of had a bit of a think and worked out a, uh, a way I think that would do it. Um, I've never seen one of these before, I've never tried making one before and so I thought okay let's, let's just sort of take it slowly uh, and make up what would be an industry would be regarded as a, a demonstration piece. So this thing isn't the, 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 the full finished product, it's far from it. It's just something that demonstrates the principle works and is worth uh, you know, developing. So that's it there. Uh, lots of lumps and spiky bits and things like that and there's you know after having made it and, and tried it I can say there are a few things to be corrected on it or to be changed on it but uh, it's something that's worth worth doing so this video is about just making up this this one uh, and then once um, once that, that's that's out uh, I'll be thinking about how I can refine this and what I need to do to it and uh, with it with a view of then producing a, a, a sort of should we say a finished model uh, and I'll put some drawings out then for that if people want to want to try making one. So this is the problem that I'm trying to get round. Um, when I'm centering stuff up in the four jaw I use a, a, a dial indicator and it's, it's a I've just made up an alarm that sits in a quick change tool post and that's that's quite a, a decent system but the problem becomes that if I want to get any closer to the chuck than that I can't um, because otherwise the the uh, the dial runs into the jaws and so if I've got something with a step on it maybe I've I've turned down a step and then I want to flick it round to finish some detail on the other end I, I can't it's it makes it a bit difficult now I can turn this thing sideways but uh, then I have to look in from here and that gets a bit awkward as well so what, I've, what I'm thinking of, uh, inspired by a friend of mine, John, is a, um, a device which will help me get right up next to the, to the chuck there without obscuring my, my view or anything like that. The key to the design is this thing. Uh, through there, there's going to be a, a pin or a, um, a bolt with a, with a cross hole and then two rods, which I've already made up, go on either end of that and slide through some bushings. Now originally I got a bit of sheet metal, uh, some two millimeter stainless, welded that up and I thought oh that'll that'll do the job, that'll that'll do nicely. But then I realized that to actually get everything square and in the right spot I would have to basically machine off that end, machine off that end, uh, drill, you know, all that sort of stuff and it, it worked out that it was just going to be um, too much effort for not having to to machine a solid piece of material uh, the sheet metal option really wasn't wasn't worth pursuing so that's where this came in and uh, this was a, actually a piece of round I, I squared it up uh, punched a hole through there hole through there and then uh, pick up where I'm, the, the the video picks up where I'm, I'm just tapping these so um, it was one of those very simple parts to start with similar to these things uh, these are just a bit of stainless rod with a with a tapped hole in the end uh, nothing nothing terribly exciting about that so I've just gone on and uh, and made those the only the other bit that, that I've, I've made up is the bit that goes through there and that's just a, a, a brass piece with a with a four millimeter cross hole I'm going to part that off but what I want to do is use this to help me get a, another part square uh, I've got a, a dowel that goes through there there's another rod that needs that dowel at, at 90 degrees and so I figured well if I leave that there I can strap that to the part um, plant my dowel in there use a bit of Loctite and uh, that'll hopefully get my I'm putting every, the everything holes in the side of my degrees. Uh, what would you call that pivot block I guess I've put a texture mark on the bottom edge of both sides. I've already done the other one and, and, and tapped it. And that's just so that I'm, I'm always measuring from the, from the same side. Uh, and then I'm using my tapping arm just to make sure the, the, the tap is as square as I can get it to, to tap that. Those two holes need to be basically um, coaxial. And so uh, 
you know, I need to take all the precautions I can with that. Once I've got that tapped, I'll get uh, a little bit of uh, M3 studding, put that in there and uh, let that dry. And that will hopefully solve my assembly problems too, because I've worked out that if I tried putting a, uh, a bolt through into the piece of rod, I've got all sorts of sequence issues. But if I tap that, uh, and put a stud in there, I can just screw the, the rods in once it's in position, so it makes it a lot easier. Things are starting to come together. This arrangement here with the the, the hollow clevisy thing in the middle is for the indicator. So the indicator sits against the work and pushes back and forth. In there there's a, a, a brass pin and in that there's a, a dowel and so what will happen is that as that goes back and forth that dowel changes angle and there'll be a, a, a flap on another thing which um, pushes against the indicator plunger. So I've got that done. I've made up some, some aluminium members here with brass bushes in them and they all just slide like so. One for either end and there'll also be some springs in there to to tend to centralize that so we'll, we'll see how all that goes the next thing i need to do is weld these onto uh, a piece of plate and i've got a, a mangy looking bit of plate here i'll have to clean that up um, but that'll be something like that with that in between and i'm going to use a piece of the same rod but in one piece between the two of them just to make sure that those holes are, are lined up when I weld everything together. As you may be able to see, graphite everywhere, but that's moving back and forth. I think I might still need to tweak the, these things because there's a, there's a sticky spot somewhere down here. No, there, sorry. I knew it was an extreme somewhere, just just a bit there where I'm not sure whether there's a burr or something like that on the on the shafting or whether it's just the the, the bush itself. But um, anyway, uh, making progress. I took a wrong turn a little while ago in that uh, I welded these uh, posts to the plate. Now, sounds good in theory but it's another one of those things where practicality trips you up because what happened was when i put the weld in there it just twisted these a little bit and, and um, made it so that things didn't line up talked to a few people about this and um, the the consensus was that uh, i needed to come fasten from the back but rather than do a plug weld as a couple of those guys uh, suggested what i'm going to do is i've just machined out a little pad here uh, and I'll machine out another one there and they will sit like that and then I'll run a, a, a screw through from the back and hold that on. It's, as, as someone pointed out, it doesn't, doesn't have to, pro, uh, to um, support an elephant. All it's got to do is hold a, a, a rod. So I'm figuring that because I've machined these back down to the same length using a rod through there to, to, to line them up, uh, I should be able to drill and tap into that, drill a hole through there, countersink from the back uh, and using these lines locate my post you may also just be able to pick up that i've overrun in this corner and that's to get myself a sharp corner for the the post to sit in uh, i could have come this way but this is the longer side so it seemed a bit more sensible to do it that way uh, but that's that gives me a something i can then locate so i've got a side there and i've got a side there i'm just missing a little bit of corner here which won't really matter too much this is the revised um body I, I guess you'd call it that so the two posts with their bronze uh, sorry with their brass bushes uh, stainless rod and as you can see that moves reasonably freely and is is self-centering now I must confess to a cheat here this bush is rimmed five but this one here is five and a half uh, between trying to get these things lined up and errors in making this in that the, the two rods aren't you know 100 percent accurate um, i i had to end up taking that out so that would would side freely so uh, probably the next iteration if there is a next iteration um, is make that block up solid put a rod through 
couple of small tacks or something like that to, to lock into the place, then machine out the middle of it. Uh, and that should then mean that that, that rod is actually um, coaxial. It means putting it together becomes a bit more awkward because it, the, the these posts then have to be, uh, this has to be assembled, then the posts have to go on. But um, we're, we're, we're trying things out at the moment. Um, but that seems to be all right. This is the next piece of the assembly. I've got my pivot tube here and a four millimeter dowel uh, in there. This is the, 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 the brass bolt, I have, which I haven't parted off yet, but this is, this is using a, a bit of flat aluminium stock to keep that shaft and that shaft parallel, and so therefore this should be at 90 degrees. I'm going to put a dot or two of weld on there, and then I need to weld on the, the, the flag on the other side there that's going to push the um, indicator stalk uh, stem. So uh, that's next. You can start to see how this thing is going to work. The rod here is, is acting like the stem of um, an indicator. And so when that pushes against something, that pivot moves along because it's got the tube there with the uh, dowel down there, that pivots, which means that that pushes against the stem of, a, of an indicator when one of those is mounted up there. I need to do some, some cutting away here because that won't fit up there with that on there and, and ideally I want to put the two there. Um, this particular paddle part here, if anybody's wondering how I made that, I started out by putting the dowel in the tube there, but then put that, and this is the first time I've ever used this so it's, it's quite novel for me. Um, I put it at the end of this V-block here, had it so that the um, the dowel was pointing down there at, at the appropriate angle so that the flap was horizontal. And then I just put a block on there, put the, the flap on there and, and welded that up. It's not perfect, but it's it's good enough to, um, to prove the concept. The final piece to put on is this block to hold the dial indicator. Uh, I'm using this, the usual thing I do uh, for this sort of stuff. Uh, holding on the stem gives me a little bit of uh, adjustment that way. So this is, this is only a, what I'd call a half cotter because with the full you know, double sided one, if you take the, the thing it's holding out, it just slides through. Here I don't particularly want to do that. So I've made this um, half that will still clamp up on, a, on an indicator stem like that. I've also put a little recess in there because I discovered that was sitting up a little bit further than I wanted it to but that's uh, that's a minor thing. And so there's the, shall we say, the completed prototype. Uh, so push on the lever and as you can see the flap moves. This is an old indicator, it's a bit gummy inside so it's not returning as quickly. I need to probably clean it out and, and do all sorts of things but that's a, that's a task for another day. I just wanted to um, grab an indicator because I wanted to grab an indicator. But yeah, that, that works quite nicely. Um, I probably don't need a thread there. I could probably get right by with a circlet because that's retained by that pin. So that's not a problem. Uh, the bolt is a little bit of a problem because I've got um, not much in the way of thread there so there's some things that I need to, to, to do to refine this and make this into a more uh, robust and user-friendly tool but at the same time I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I could probably, you know, all sorts of things, I could probably shorten that a little bit. Mm, maybe, maybe not, we'll see, we'll see. Um, but the big question is I guess, does it work? Well, let's go to the lathe and have a look. Here's the, uh, the prototype in, in full mock-up uh, guise and uh, already I, I can see some things that I need to do to it. Um, but the idea being that it can come along and get right up to the chuck, chuck there uh, for small bits of material so that I can, I can uh, you know, center them right there. So that's, that's what I wanted. Problems with it, uh, as I said earlier, getting this rod lined up was uh, was a problem. Uh, I also think I may have this rod a bit too long because this has got to sit right back um, for that to uh, to work, which for a 
um, you know, if it's sitting around about there, it's okay. But if it was forward, say another 30 millimeters, uh, I'd soon run out of travel here on the, um, the, the, the cross slide. So I need to shorten that a little bit. And I also need to, to get a better mount. Uh, this is sitting on a bit of plate at the moment because I've got a bolt that's too long and I didn't particularly want to cut it off. Um, but I probably need to come up with a better mounting, whether that's a boss on here and then I have to crank this plate back to, uh, to get to the dial. I haven't got the second dial on there because it's, it's basically a repeat of this one and uh, I can see that it, it'll work, but it's, um, you know, I need to, I'd, I'd need to make up a hook to, um, to, to get that to, to work. So that's, that's all right. So anyway, that's a, that's a, that's a prototype and um, I'll be thinking about how I can refine that over the, over the next weeks and, and uh, see what we can come up with. So thanks for watching and uh, see you for the next one.